First of four, building a murder case without a body. Prosecutors call the daughter of a missing woman to talk about her mother's marriage. Also, May is off to a pretty glorious beginning, but rain could make a comeback in the next few days. Your forewarned forecast is coming up. And let's check in with Paula. Okay, music, it is transformative. And I'm at a performance right now with a musical journey that is transforming the feelings of seniors. It's a fun trip. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Drew. First at 4, we are tracking a murder case without a body. Dee Warner has been missing now for more than three years. Today, a preliminary hearing began for her husband, Dale Warner. As prosecutors try to convince a judge the case against him should go to trial, he's charged with murder. Details of the case are being laid out in a Lenawee County Court. One of the prosecution's witnesses was Dee Warner's daughter, who claims her mother was planning to divorce Dale. She said that she was, um, her marriage was already over and um, she was going to divorce him. <clears throat> Did she say anything about her plans for later that day? She said, I don't even have the energy to pack my bags. Warner's attorneys argue his wife's alleged divorce plans are irrelevant to the case. Before testimony got underway, the defense successfully argued against having D. Warner's death order included as evidence, which could make proving she's even been murdered very difficult. We'll have more on the case tonight at 5. Today, we're learning more about an expanded lawsuit connected to a birthday party tragedy at the Swan Boat Club in Monroe County. A woman is accused of driving drunk into the club, killing two children and injuring nearly a dozen others. A short time ago, Marco Law talked about the amended lawsuit, adding more victims as plaintiffs and adding the Swan Club itself as a defendant. Attorney John Marco says the way the club was built and configured near the road isn't safe enough. There's vehicles traveling on this. If you're going to put a building directly in proximity to a road like that, there has to be some type of, of uh, protection. Now, we did reach out to the Swan Club for reaction. It's not commenting. Meantime, the driver in the case, Marcella Chidester, was released from jail on a $1.5 million bond. She awaits trial on several charges, including second-degree murder. Thousands of Detroit Tigers fans are roaring after a disagreement between Comcast Xfinity and Bally Sports. Xfinity dropped the sports channel at midnight, leaving fans unable to watch their favorite team. Comcast released a statement saying, in part, quote, we have offered them multiple options to continue carrying their networks. They have declined each. It says customers will receive credits for losing that service. Bally's parent company, Diamond Sports Group, responded saying, quote, it's disappointing that Comcast rejected a proposed extension that would have kept our channels on the air, despite Diamond offering terms similar to those reached with much larger distributors of ours. Tonight at 5, we're going to dig deeper into this dispute. We're going to talk about what happens next. We're also going to take a look at other viewing options that you definitely might want to try. Our coverage continues at 5. Now, out with the old and in with the new, you are taking a look at the new vision for the land that's now occupied by the Lakeside Mall over in Sterling Heights, which is set to close July 1st. Developers created this video to show us what they're hoping to create during a $1 billion redevelopment. The plan is to create new housing, parks, and retail areas. Here's some more highlights of this ambitious proposal. Of course, the mall would be demolished to make room for the new development. A new city center would include about 30 acres dedicated to public spaces, including a spacious central park. Developers have plans for something called Great Streets, which will support local businesses and events. The groundbreaking for the new Lakeside Town Center is set for late 2025. Tonight at 5, we are going to talk to city leaders about all of this, and we're going to stop inside the mall and get a little bit of reaction to the end of an era. In your first forecast, it's May 1st, but it feels more like June, right? Take a live look at Metro Airport. Brian Sherman is in now for Kim Adams. And really, there is not much to complain about. It is gorgeous. Yeah, that's right, Karen. Lots of sunshine today, but you'll notice it's been a little breezy as you're heading outside. Those breezy winds and warm temperatures continue throughout much of our day today on Wednesday. Tower cam over downtown Detroit. Old Glory blowing very briskly in the wind as we're heading into this afternoon. We've cracked that 80 degree mark in some locations as well. 80 right now over at Metro Airport. 80 also over in Ann Arbor. 77 in 
Port Huron and 79 as you're checking in with us down in Monroe. Winds gusting in excess of 20 to 30 plus miles an hour, 35 miles an hour up in Flint, also 31 miles an hour over in Ann Arbor and at Metro Airport. I do think we will start to see these winds relax a little bit as we head into the late evening and overnight hours tonight. A little bit of cloud cover to go with some of that sunshine today, so we'll hold on to some of that overnight tonight. It'll be another mild night overnight as we drop into the 50s by the time we get to midnight, but all good things must come to an end. Rain is on the way by the end of the week. I'll break down when the umbrella comes in handy. Your complete full warrant forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Karen. All right, Brian, former President Donald Trump will be in Michigan in just a few hours for a quick campaign rally and speech. He's stopping in Freeland. That's near Saginaw. His comments will be closely monitored after he was found in contempt of court for violating a gag order in his hush money trial in New York. Now, court is not in session today, so that allows him to make stops in Wisconsin and Michigan, two key battlegrounds in 2024. Meantime, President Joe Biden has another visit to Michigan on his schedule. He will speak at the NAACP's Fight for Freedom dinner in Detroit. That's May 19th. It will be the president's third campaign visit to our state this year. In other news this afternoon, New York City police are sharing these images of a calm, quiet and cleaned up Columbia University. Officers moved in overnight to remove demonstrators from a campus building, but protests continue at several other schools coast to coast. Kimberly Gill joins us now to talk about the operation at Columbia and one other protest that did turn violent, Kim. Right. Hi, Karen. Good afternoon to you. The NYPD is sharing these images from Columbia University after they moved in overnight to break up a demonstration that had paralyzed the school. You can see some of the damage there inside Hamilton Hall. Police wore riot uniforms and tactical gear as they moved in to clear out the demonstrators. About 119 people were arrested, including 40 who had barricaded themselves inside the building. Three injuries were reported. New York's mayor says the police operation was organized and calm. He's also convinced outside forces were at work. Students have a right to protest and free speech is the cornerstone of our society. But as our major concern, we knew and we saw that there were those who were never concerned about free speech. They were concerned about chaos. It was about external actors hijacking peaceful protests and influenced students to escalate. Over on the West Coast, things got dangerous between dueling groups of protesters at UCLA in Los Angeles. Pro-Israel demonstrators tried to pull down barricades surrounding a pro-Palestinian encampment. After a few hours of scuffles, police intervened to stop the violence. UCLA canceled classes today and stationed police throughout the campus. Most of the pro-Palestinian protesters on college campuses are pushing their schools to end investments that help Israel. Meanwhile, Secretary of State Antony Blinken is in the Middle East, pushing both sides to agree to a ceasefire. We're hearing current talks are serious, but the sides remain far apart on whether any deal could actually end the war. We will, of course, of course, keep you posted. Karen, we'll send it back to you. All right. Thanks, Kim. Here at home, it is a musical field trip that took some local senior citizens back in time. The nonprofit Motor City Lyric Opera launched a mini tour of Bloomfield Hills. Our Paula Tutman caught a show and brings us along for the ride. Here's a hobby, here's a hobby, here's a hobby. It is music that stirs the soul and moves the foot. It moved right through my body. <laughs> Uh, but bring him home got me started with the tears. It is music that has withstood the test of time and the strains of history. Magic bells are ringing, bring my sweetheart here. A mobile performance by Motor City Lyric Opera. Never really focused on opera, but this was this was a way of sort of reminding me that there there's a whole other dimension to it. A nonprofit that travels to provide the experience of music to children and elders for free for music's sake. And today at Cedarbrook and American House Senior Care Centers in Bloomfield Hills, transformational music that transfixed and transported. <laughs> Before my voice got old, <laughs> I loved to sing, and so this just meant so much to me. The traveling show is called Mozart to Les Mis, and it takes the audience on a musical journey through time, from Mozart's The Magic Flute to the charming Rossini Cat Duet, where the lyrics are as complicated as...
to Gershwin's Porgy and Bess. It's unbelievable. I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I appreciate the, all the effort that went into the doing this. Bravo, brava, bravi for the most lovely group of performers. And then to Come From Away, a stirring prayer of multiple faiths that show unity and not tolerance, but acceptance. Such an example of goodness over evil. And I just think that's such an important message that we all reach across the aisle, forgive. It's wonderful that a group like this is active in spreading the beauty of their music all over. Yeah, I sit on the board of Motor City Lyric Opera. Can you tell I'm proud of the work that's being done? And the team gets to come into beautiful places. Look at this. I just want you to look at this senior care center. We were at Cedar Brook earlier today. This is American House in Bloomfield Hills. Also, here's the thing. We love going into schools and also senior centers, but free performance this Sunday at the newly restored The Schwitz Ballroom on our social media platforms. We're going to put information. We want to share the music with the public as well so we can show you the music in the mission and the mission in the music, Karen. Love it. Thank you so much for sharing, Paula.